In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways for how to upload custom fonts to your Bubble app. You'll need to go to the settings section of your application and then under the general tab. At the very bottom of that uh, general area, you'll see this custom font section here. So we need to insert uh, the font name, which is just a name that we can give uh, every font weight. So if you're planning on uploading an entire family of fonts um, where they have different weights, maybe some are italicized, some are bold, um, or, or just like a regular weight. If you have multiple weights for the same family, you're going to need to upload each one of these individually. So you'll name it there, and then you'll enter in the um, actual file path to where the font is hosted um, in its CSS format. So the first way is if you have a font that's already hosted somewhere else, which is the simpler way. Bubble actually recommends to use um, free font libraries that do this for you, such as Font Library. So I've gone ahead and looked up a font here on fontlibrary.org. This one is called Wall to Graph. It's like a Disney styling um, for the font. And on the page here on the right, you'll see this link to the CSS file path for this specific font. So I'm going to highlight this part of this um, URL here, uh, copy it, and I will paste that directly into the file path section there. And I'm just going to give this the name Wall to Graph like that. There's only one weight for this particular font, so we'll do, but that's all we need to add there. So I'll click on add font and you'll see it added there. You can see that the um, actual styling of the font updated so we can see that it um, uploaded properly. And if I add a text element to my page here and remove the styling just so that I can see the font in action, I'm just going to make this a lot bigger and we'll say um, this is my new font. Okay, and then select my new wall to graph font here. All of your um, uploaded custom fonts will appear at the top of the font list. So I can see it right there, and I can see that that uploaded properly. So that one's pretty straightforward. So again, you just want to find the link to where the font is already hosted online somewhere. Now you might want to upload fonts that uh, you need to host yourself. So for example, uh, this font library, 1001freefonts.com, also offers fonts for you to download. Some, some of them uh, require that you uh, pay uh, separate licenses to the authors. Some of them the authors give them away for free. So you kind of have to see um, font by font what the requirements are. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to check out this national cartoon font here. Now I can download um, some font files provided by the author. So I'm going to click on that and we'll see what this gives us because we don't have a link to the font um, location host because it's not hosted anywhere. We just have the files packaged for us in a folder that we can download. So I'm going to download this zip file here. I'm going to open this up and extract my contents here. Okay, so here is the actual file for the font itself. This is a .ttf, which is a pretty popular file extension for fonts. You might see other ones, um, just depends on where you're downloading it from, how the author has packaged it, um, and also what operating system uh, you're using. But so, so you might not have a .ttf, it might be something else, but ultimately you want the file for the font itself. And what we're going to do is upload this to our Bubble app so that we can then create a CSS file out of it. I'm going to show you how to do this. So just on a test page somewhere, put a um, file uploader element to your page, just anywhere there. And then we're going to upload a static file to this element here. Really what we're looking for is just the URL for the hosted file once it's been uploaded to Bubble. So I'll grab this file here. This is my .ttf file. And now I have a link that I can grab. So I'm going to copy that. Okay. Then I'm going to open up a text editor. So I'm just going to grab my notepad um, application here. And this text here is going to create our CSS file. And I'm actually going to paste this in the description below so that you can copy and paste it really quick. Uh, this is just my template here. So what I'm going to do is paste the link that I just generated from that file uploader in there. And i got to make sure that this needs to have HTTPS with the colon in front of it. All right. So the only thing I've left to do here is give this a name national cartoon. This should match exactly um, as you'll label it in the settings uh, for when we're adding the font. Uh, national, like, like that. 
National Cartoon. All right, so now I'm going to save this file as National Cartoon .css. Okay, it needs to be .css. That's the file type that Bubble is looking for. So I'll hit save. Great, and now I can go back to my settings here. I'm going to give this new font name National Cartoon. Remember, this must match what, however you typed it into your CSS file. And then, uh, and then we need to upload uh, the CSS file to Bubble so that we can have a new URL for that as well. So I'm going to do the same thing like I did with the font file. Upload. This is my cascading style sheet. That's what CSS stands for. Okay, we can see the type there. So I'll select that. And now I have my CSS URL, and I can paste this into the CSS file path. And again, just remember at the very beginning, we want HTTPS with a colon. All right, so I'll hit Add Font. And this should update. I might need to click away. It'll update in a second. I'm gonna. It, we'll uh, add a text element so that we can see it more immediately here. National cartoons. This is just a regular text element. I'll make it nice and big so that you can see it. And my font is going to be national cartoon. We can see that it's been updated here. The styling. So there we go. Now we have our nice custom font that has actually been hosted um, on our Bubble server, actually. So I'm going to go through those steps one more time since that's a little bit more technical. The first thing you want to do is you will download the font files from wherever you're grabbing them. Maybe you have them from an, a designer or from a free library like this. Okay, What you should get in that download is a font file for that font. All right. This file you want to upload to your file uploader. And the only purpose of doing that is to grab the URL that is generated out of that upload. Now the font itself is hosted on Bubble. I'm going to clear this out just so that I can talk through it. So once you upload that font file to here, it's going to be hosted on Bubble. We're getting a lot closer to what uh, Font Library gave us. But notice that Font Library gave us a CSS file. We don't have a CSS file yet. We've only uploaded our font file here. So that's when I opened up my text editor and uh, inserted my font file that I generated um, in this section here. And again, I'm going to paste this in the description below. Uh, make sure to give the font family a name. Okay. And then you want to save this file uh, with whatever name you want to give it, but give it the extension of .css. Okay. Now that you have the .css file saved to your computer, you want to come back to your file uploader and upload that so that you can have that CSS file hosted on Bubble. And now you have a URL that is equivalent to what Font Library is giving you over here. Obviously, you can see the differences. If you're doing a custom self-hosted thing, there's a handful more steps. Whereas with something like Font Library, you're literally just copying and pasting this URL directly to the settings and you're done. Um, but it is possible to upload your own fonts, um, and, and this is the process that you want to take to make that happen. So once you have that CSS file uploaded, you can insert that into the file path here. The font name has to be the exact same as uh, whatever you labeled it here in your text editor, uh, and there you go. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe to the channel. I upload videos frequently. Thanks so much for watching.